Hello everyone, uh, today we make a little uh, small talk uh, with Pasha because uh, we don't know uh, nothing about Pasha. I don't know you talked before about you, no, I your think, history. I yeah. think uh, if we say it, nothing is uh, a little wrong because I'm so many times with Brandon Mitchell, I'm talking about this on a flashback, but uh, I think that small talk with you can open uh, other side of me or something like this. <laughs> okay, so you know that uh, Pasha is an Ukrainian officer, yeah? Now you are a major. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, can you say something about the be beginning? Why you go to the army? Yeah. You know, I'm. I was born in a near Kharkiv in a small village. Uh, and uh, when you graduate from the school, you had uh, not so many ways. Uh, I I was born and grew up in a small village, and you have two ch chance, or you go to took more, uh, to, or you go to took higher education in a university or something like this, or you will stay in a village and you will be alcoholic yeah. <laughs> and you will sell drugs. And yes, and uh, uh, in a ten class. I understand that education in my school in a city is shit in my village mm -hmm. because in my class I had uh, only four classmates, four and, and five. Okay. Uh, and uh, in 10 class I'm just a uh, leave from the typical village school and go to military lyceum and after mili mili military lyceum it's, uh, it's, it's typical when uh, military lyceum graduators go to the military academy or military university but I choose three. University first it was a pedagogical university in Kharkiv. I want to be a history teacher. Second, it was a journalistics faculty in a and I know more most expensive university of the Kharkiv. Sometimes it was the one uh, of the expensive university in Ukraine, Karazina. And third one is the was the National Academy of National Guard. But Karazina was too expensive. It was much more than. 40,000 hrinas per year, uh, but salary of my mother per year was 60,000 hrinas, mm -hmm. and this was impossible. Uh, and I understand that to be a teacher is the shit, is too difficult. You must be, you must like it. Okay. I, I, and I don't know. And I go to the military. I uh, I can't say that I had no choice, but it was interesting for me from the my childhood. Okay, okay. Uh, can you tell us? Uh, because I think it will be interesting because uh, the Ukrainian people, the Ukrainian army uh, know that it, it's very close to the war. So what do you feel a couple weeks before the war start? Uh, we lived in a very big informational bubble. Big informational bubble, you know, because when I uh, joined to the rapid reaction brigade in infantry brigade mm -hmm. we uh, preparing to the war and we understand that uh, war can happen at next day yeah mm -hmm. we we were ready but when a russian group uh, concentrate more close to the borders we understand that something will be mm -hmm. uh, media talk that something will be uh, british intelligence told it american intelligence told it but uh, Ukrainian information policy, uh, Ukrainian media and president too said, no, always be okay, always be good, mm. and we trust him, why not? And uh, yeah, always be good. I know that some uh, it's happened, but I don't know when. And uh, one day before uh, full-scale invasion is happened, I'm just uh, go out from the service to my home. I think that I have a holiday in mm -hmm. Tuesday and 24 February. Uh, we were ready in general but mm -hmm. we wasn't understand that it's happened so soon okay and uh, it was a typical night before invasion mm -hmm. i'm just uh, go to sleep and uh, and that's all and i wake up at uh, four o'clock uh, 4 a.m because my soldier called me and said hey <laughs> senior lieutenant is the uh, alarm i said training alarm he said no combat i'm just uh, wake up check the telegram channel and first video what i see that Putin sit near table and said, we started, мы начинаем специальную военную операцию. I'm saying, what the fuck? 
check next i'm see that irpin under bombing kiev under bombing kharkiv under bombing i said what the fuck i took my old bags and go uh, go in a brigade but thanks for god i'm served in a normal brigade in a okay. combat brigade and uh, we had not we had no problem with the uh, took in weapon took uh, in equipment we just took our shit and uh, we were ready to fight okay and and What's the time be between the, the, the you have the uh, information about the war start and you take the weapon and you you, you was ready? Uh, it depends f personally, you know. I w I lived not so long from the uh, brigade and I come for the 30 minutes. But uh, I think more interesting will be answer if I'm said half time between war start and i had information that words war okay. start at first war start yeah, yeah it's like <laughs> after this uh, we took information that war mm -hmm. start because it was surprise for yeah, us yeah. one day before ministry of the internal affair he's come on our object on a hostile airport he talked with a soldier and he said guys are you ready to destroy russian jets and uh a soldier say yeah yeah we are ready we have well, that will always be good and say okay thanks for your service and he go out mm -hmm. maybe in his mind he prepare us that something oh, can okay. happen <laughs> but he just you are ready and we say yeah yeah and he go out so, okay <laughs> we're ready okay and this, is, this this is strange yeah because you told us that the intelligence told that it it, it, it will be a war yeah it, we you are really close to the war and the president and the media told that everything will be fine. Uh, for me, it's a different what they told to, you know, TV or what the president will tell to the citizens. And it should be different what the soldiers know. Yeah. We don't know. We know nothing. Okay. You know, this information, I told you that uh, HICOM don't talk a lot. Maybe okay. HICOM know something because we were ready, we trained, we trained, we trained. Uh, but for soldiers, for the my level of officers, I was just a battalion officer. It was a surprise. I know that HICOM know this, special services know this, some police HICOM know this because my because my neighbor, he served in a headquarter of police in Kiev. He know this f one day before, mm -hmm. and uh, we go out from the flat in one time, and he said, "Yes, I know bef because uh, I'm just uh, come back to home and prepare my uh, stuff." Yeah, yeah, for because for me, for me, it should like this that you have the information. <laughs> we are really close to the war, so you should take your stuff and be ready. Uh, I I understand why we had uh, this situation that. Uh, everybody knows, but nobody knows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. I know because panic, yeah. panic. We talk uh, about panic on uh, your training uh, in a Poland with the civilians. We talk about panic in our situation when we met with civilian on the front mm -hmm. line. Uh, panic is the most terrible what can happen yeah. and, uh, when something uh, something going on. Technological disaster, nature disaster, war, something like this. Panic. My government tried to avoid panic, and I understand for what they do this. Okay. But I think uh, that they hide this information. They don't make a better. Mm -hmm. They don't make a better because for the territory like Hostomel and yeah. Bucha, yeah, yeah. people wasn't ready. But Russian just a uh, uh, Russian airborne just a come in a Hostomel by heli, and Hostomel yeah, was yeah, occupied on the okay. first day of war. Yeah, and we. Yeah, and it's uh, now maybe we will talk about the hostel. Maybe you will uh, told us the the our new followers and the other people who never watch us about the first day, how they looks in your eyes. Uh, short story, you know, short and not interesting story. Uh, I'm I'm coming brigade, as you know, my brigade uh, biggest part of brigade. They were on Luhansk region. And in Hostomel was only officers uh, of my level, staff officers, uh, rear soldiers, you know, I mean, supply units or something like this, mm -hmm. uh, cooks, uh, staff, and uh, only a couple uh, sergeant and soldiers from the infantry companies, uh, from the infantry uh, battalions, and conscriptors, you know, Srochniki. And where was all other people? Uh, on a Donbass. Why? Uh, two weeks before full-scale invasion started, 
uh, we had a combat order. Mm -hmm. Combat order come from the general staff that uh, our brigade will go on a Donbass, mm -hmm. on, a, on a Luhansk region, on Stanitsa Luhanska. Mm -hmm. Stanitsa Luhanska, it was uh, once of the place uh, on a Dus front line in mm -hmm. Ato, or mm -hmm. Os, as we said, it was not full scale invasion. Mm, uh, too much close to the enemies, mm -hmm. uh, only one ri uh, river separating. Mm -hmm. enemy's position and us and we must change that uh, armed forces brigade are there it was two weeks before full-scale invasion and all tanker guys or ada guys air defense units artillery mans infantry mans all guys just uh, took his back mm -hmm. and go on a donbass and the brigade was naked you know only yeah. only couple soldiers we had more than 2000 people mm -hmm. but on the days of hostile invasion it was no more than 200 people and not all these people was ready to fight because yeah. it's the conscriptors, cooks, staff officers, women, uh, or something like this. But it's not. It wasn't so panic. We just uh, come and see that women crying. <laughs> yeah, but uh, they send you uh, to the Donbas before they thinking the war starts there, or it, it, it's it's the decision to push you from the hostel. No. Two way, two way. I don't want to be a hater or something like this, but I see two way of this. Mm -hmm. uh, I understand that my guys was very important on the Donbass. Mm -hmm. They do real good job. They defend Rubizhne. They was uh, near Stanitsa Luhanska. Uh, they do real great job. But main question, why they go out? Who make decision for remove these guys? Because mm -hmm. uh, if uh, we had a uh, reconnaissance intelligence data that they will try to occupy airports the russians will do airborne situation mm -hmm. you just uh, make once of the biggest airport in a kiev it's antonov uh maria on mm -hmm. 225 maria is the biggest jets in uh, jet in a world flying by this uh, yeah, yeah. airport it, uh, is the once of the biggest airport in ukraine and why it's airport naked and the MC, yes, we, we can use we can be useful on a Donbass, but why we uh, don't fight on a hostel? Where is the guys? And I see two ways. Maybe one way is it's impostor. <laughs> Se yeah. Second way is the that high command understand that we can do real great job on a Donbass. And for me, it doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah, it's, so happened. it's happened. We survive. We are alive. And the hostel again, Ukrainian. Uh, we come back in our brigade, in our flats, in our houses. And it's okay. I don't worry about this. Um, uh, give this question for yourself maybe first couple of months. But uh, after this, I understand that it's happened. That we can change this. Okay. And uh, when you came back to Gostomel, yeah? To European? European? Uh, nah. Uh, you mean after the occupation or during Kyiv defense operation? Yeah, the Kyiv defense operation. Because you go back and... and uh, it was a situation we just uh, disengaged, you know, okay. because the limitation number of soldiers, we disengaged from the hostel and we regroup in Kyiv. Maybe two days or three, we sit in a Kiev. We regroup. Uh, volunteers are coming. My uh, friend, my mate, weekend are coming to join my team. We made a mixed company. Maybe 120 men or something like this. It was only this 120 men who was ready to fight in my yeah. brigade for the Kiev. And after this, we go in uh, Irpin. Uh, we don't fight for Hostomel, mm -hmm. it's do other units, but uh, we go fight uh, in Irpin. It's it was for me, you know. It's I think it was it was my first direct contact as a commander role because what's going on in Hostomel, it's a uh, it's really shit for me, you know. Yeah. We hiding sometimes shooting, blah blah blah. It's nothing. In Irpin, I'm go like a APC commander. Mm -hmm. Is the Soviet old uh, BTR 70? APC-17 is the shit, scrap of metal. 
doesn't work gun, doesn't work mm -hmm. engine, doesn't work brakes. Uh, me and my crew is two guys and my uh, section eight yeah. guys, they was on this APC the scene and I think when I die, I die because <laughs> my my APC will crash it or uh, I die because Russian kill me. But okay. it was most terrible uh, operation for me because it's first my operation and is the urban uh, operation. Ur urban okay. operation. So yes, because you can't wait from any window, from any, any house, this is the dangerous. Yeah. But uh, thanks for God, maybe we're so lucky, uh, our, contact start, uh, our, our contact start when Russian military column, it was Marine guys or uh, Airborne, we on uh, his BMD. BMD mm -hmm. is the Bayva uh, Machine Desanta, yeah, yeah, yeah. Airborne uh, fucking uh, FEV. So they just uh, move in and we was on the back. Yeah. of these guys and we just uh bunch him on the back uh, very successfully we destroy eight bmd maybe mm -hmm. more than 30 40 russian was died yeah. and no one our guys fallen no one we lose two apc my npc my apc two uh we had couple wounded but every guy who come in their pain they alive they they survive in their pain and they go back in the kiev After this, it was a motion. Huta Mejihirska is the defense line near Irpin River because okay. it, it was a uh, Irpinka River that was city Irpin, but it's Irpinka River. Irpinka River is was the last chance for Russian to penetrate in Kiev. But no, we were, we were on a defense more than two weeks and we do this successfully. Yeah, we have fallen soldier, we have losers, we have wounded, but we did it. It's the main Zampolit battalion. Zamporosci not only, good word, but also quick work. Oh, man, the blood is also Позиция у нас охуенная. Там пидорасы, там пидорасы и там пидорасы. Тут еще пока не надо. Шлах наш. Вот такие дела. Даже замполит батальона копая, блядь. Все. What did you feel when you have a first combat uh, contact? Uh, mm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I can't describe this, you know, because uh, I'm sitting in APC. Fucking stupid uh, man from the signal uh, unit of my brigade. Uh, don't launch my radio station in uh, mm -hmm. in my APC and uh, the, I use infantry Motorola yeah. and uh, I don't hear what's going on. Mm -hmm. I uh, sit in a f I sit in a forward order in a, my APC and they uh, hear by radio station Ruskie dude is the Russian going on. I say what the fuck? I'm just a Kruchu. Uh, I'm just a watching uh, yeah. forward by this special uh, commander's yeah, yeah, optic yeah. and then I descend that I see nothing. I said to my crew gunner, uh, hey, you see something? Yes, I see. Can you shot? And he said, yes. We start shooting from our IPC, three or four shot and uh, our machine gun uh, capability just uh, blowed up. Yeah. Uh, not blow up. Blow up if, if it's exposed, yeah. just crash it. Yeah, crash. It's, don't yeah. start, see. Start working. Uh, stop working. Stop working. Yes, it, what the fuck? 
and uh, after 40 30 seconds just a rpg7 fucking round hit under uh, under the beard dam. under the B, my btr ah, BTR. it is was a cumulative uh, fucking cumulative grenade they don't hit us but yeah. it's hit under our under. Uh, yeah. yes and you know cumulative uh, struya it, this uh, cumulative grenade was so hot yeah. maybe a couple thousand degree and then see that my cheeks are red i i feel that my legs uh, so hot and the uh, driver rapid driver okay this uh this bar go out we just uh, disembark we l l live from this apc and <laughs> and survive because next one can be our yes we just uh, i i feel nothing it was uh, like a, a, a animals uh animals feel you are shoot or die you are moving yeah, yeah, you or don't die. think yeah i don't think okay. but only after uh this hit from rpg i understand that before i'm living wrong <laughs> 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 all my life i see all my life for the one second yes. yeah really yeah yeah okay and uh, can you tell us uh you you were in bucha or not uh no no only irpin and after this defense operation uh for uh, people must understand that uh kiev defense operation was very successful but we have no one version how we finish this because some media say that russian just leave yeah. some media say that uh so no name super brigade come and kill all russians and they leave but no uh um, in a real situation as we know they tried to push uh, so long time uh, and it was unsuccessful mm -hmm. and biggest mistake of the russian it was a bad logistic mm -hmm. they have no logistic for arm his artillery for rearm his uh, for the fuel his vehicle they just uh, leave from vehicle uh, and go out because bad logistic if they make a good road for logistics i don't know maybe we fight for key for this day yeah after two years but yes they feel very big problem with logistics and they understand that it's unreal to occupy kiev and they okay. disengage it but they don't just leave our offensive brigade is the 10 brigade from columbia okay. uh, 10 um, mountain assault brigade airborne 92 brigade so many brigade of armed forces just uh, pushed him and it was a <laughs> last chance to him and russia just lived but uh, with combats too and yes it was successful operation after this i'm um, uh, go uh, um, i i took pneumonia mm -hmm. <laughs> in a forest in a motion and i have three days just i had the medication and after this we go to the uh, rubizna in the okay. but uh, i think that most interest side of the for the our subscribers for the viewers is the civilian side in a Kiev, you know, I never see this. I never see when, uh, you know, now we are living like a separate people. You can uh, see your neighbor, but you can don't say hello to him. Yeah, yeah. you like a separate people. But in those time, all Ukrainian, all guys who lived in a Kiev, in a Bucha, in a Irpin, is the was uh, like a very, very big family. I don't know who are you but you my brother i don't know who are you older woman but you my mother and it's yeah, really it's, it's always in in poland we have the same situation with some shit it's happened and it's always couple days it's looking like this and later we, we're you know maybe not the enemy but we don't know each other so it's it's the same situation uh, yeah and it, it just said that now we have the situation but this those time it's very motivated us Mm -hmm. doesn't matter we have no food we have no water we sit uh, in a march in a forest and we uh, two days have no water my commander consul he go to the uh, closest village and took bottle with the uh, water and uh, five liter bottles mm -hmm. and it was freezed and uh, you know how we drink freezed water you just um, take off gloves mm -hmm. by heat uh, hands you heat in uh, the bottle the bottle yes only a couple drops yeah, yeah, you yeah. hit and you this cup you drink this couple drugs and you're fucking happy and i understand that you took this water but it can be a last water <laughs> in this in the city or village and people was ready to share this because they do all for the victory 
I'm I'm remember one situation when we go into the forest in a motion and a uh, very older woman they uh, go out from his house and say stop stop guys I said what the fuck maybe he wanna uh, she wanna give something for us and they give very expensive jacket I don't know if it's fox pieces or something like yeah. this shuba and it's very expensive I, I, I understand because my grandma had something like this now is the very unique uh, and she gave it and said hey guys you can cut this and uh, use it in your trench for maybe it uh, can uh, make more heat for you I said this woman give for us last his uh, mm-hmm. you know it's maybe most expensive things what she have but she ready to share this and she do this for the victory for us and same shit was uh, with, uh, with the average civilians. So the people was grateful in in that time. Uh, yeah. What the what now? It's people. It, it, how people react when they see the veteran or the guy from from especially if they see the veteran, they are grateful. You f- feel it's okay or something like this, or it's it, it's you see that it's a little problem because uh, people uh, don't show the grateful or something like this. It's uh. I can't say that always bad in general, but uh, if you so far from war, you don't think about war. When we were in a Kiev and war uh, were close to the Kiev, everybody thinks about war, about soldiers, about military. Everybody was grateful for us. They yeah. share something for free and something like this. But now we have no war in Kiev two years and uh, people forgot about this okay they forgot how uh, nothing working how uh, people from kiev can't buy uh, base uh, base nutrition can't buy water how is it uh, without electricity how russian jets bombing kiev directly they forgot about this yeah they i i (laughs) but think now because all about that you know it's my first visit in kiev and we see everything is normal yeah because people is walking the street yeah the cars are flowing and uh, and there's it's a lot of people in the city and even when it's alarm people are normally live and they live because a lot of guys are doing the great job yeah so i think the ukrainian people especially should be grateful for the soldiers because if if not them they will can't live normally and go to the pub and drink beer uh yeah you're right is the result of work of the defense forces of ukraine yeah. and i uh, doesn't mean that every must live in, in a war mood that you yeah, must yeah, yeah, worry yeah, sure. you must live and soldier fight on a front line for the civilian life because when i'm sit uh, on a, my first station in luhansk in rubizhne i'm sitting in rubizhne and said Ooh, what the fuck I'm fine the, I'm fighting these guys in the Kiev do nothing they just walking blah 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 but when I'm firstly come back to the civilian city from the long time on the front line I'm see the civilian city I'm uh, see working restaurants I'm see girls walking families walking uh, children laughing and I see always good and it's result of our work life shouldn't stop yeah of course of course but you know when i came and see that the live is normally and it's strange because you know i put some stories that it's 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 a uh air alert yeah uh, uh, air alarm 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 alert yeah so and nothing happened yeah people normally walk it's it's not a problem and i was grateful that uh, the guys are working and i can walk and you know go to the restaurant see see some uh, buildings in kiev so i was really grateful and i know that they are doing great job so for me it's strange that the normal civilian in 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 the ukraine are not grateful yeah i i know that they shouldn't you know say thank you thank you but you know what we are talking about yeah, yeah? you see it even in the in the in the eyes and and uh, normally when i put the stories a lot of people yeah you sleep in kiev and there is a the, you know air alert what are you doing nothing fuck i sleep yeah yeah because uh, <laughs> the uh, same situation was yesterday or two days ago in the lviv yeah it was it, it was alarm and okay we go sleep people are on on the street it's normally and it, they are on the streets because a lot of guys are really hard working so i think everyone should be 
uh, grateful a little bit more. And it's the same situation when uh, when we met the older woman and she hear that we are talking in Polish language and uh, she say thank you. And uh, it's always nice because, you know, we, we don't need it. Yeah, we don't need it. We help because we want to help. But it's always nice that somebody are grateful yeah, and see that uh, we are a Polish guys and we are hel hel help you. We, we, we are friends, yeah, we are like family because we, we, are, uh, we, we are the same. And uh, uh, we can see that somebody have discounts for, the, for you, for the military guys. Somebody don't do this, but it doesn't yeah. mean that they don't give a fuck about army. They again remember about us when uh, shit is happened again. But it's uh, important information for our viewers who want to come to Ukraine. Uh, Kyiv is the most uh, one of the most safety cities on the uh, center of Ukraine because thanks for the our four partners who had a very good uh, air defense system and you shouldn't be so nervous in a Kyiv maybe more close to the front line yeah, it's yeah, biggest yeah. chance that missile will come but armed forces of Ukraine air uh, air defense uh, mm -hmm. forces they do really great job they destroy 80 percent 90 percent of the missiles and uh, in in kiev you can have a small rest you yeah statistic is so big city even lviv is so big so statistic is is, is we don't so talk about lviv because it's too far yeah <laughs> lviv especially is is uh, too far so lviv is extra safe i yeah, think extra safe. yeah it's extra safe <laughs> like, so. like bukovel now yeah like bukovel now <laughs> yeah yeah so yes, and that is my short story, is nothing. I'm, ju I'm just a man from the Kharkiv village. I love Ukraine, I love military servers, I love mountain and, uh, you know, but I'm uh, sad that we now have a situation in society, it's two sides. One side, it's uh, people uh, who worried about war because yeah. his father, grandfather, yeah, yeah, yeah. brother, son fight. And other part, they don't give a fuck about war. Uh, I'm just a uh, make repost in Instagram and a super fucking patriot, blah, blah, blah. I give 10 hryvnas and uh, I don't want to go on a war because this uh, go on a war must do only professionally uh, army. Yeah, yeah. I said, you you really professional army we have yeah. worked two fucking years or professional army who firstly met with the enemies uh, they wounded they die they leave from the service because they two years fight every people must uh, you or uh, every people must understand if you have full-scale war in your country you are working for the victory or you fight for yeah, the victory yeah, no yeah. chance but yeah, we shouldn't forget about uh, we shouldn't forget about uh, normal life, about rest, about restaurants, mm -hmm. because it's our relax. When you come back from the front line, it's the very good when you can can go in a restaurant. Yeah, 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 yeah. Of course. So thanks for the nice yeah, speech. Our our first speech, but not the last one. There is the my dear says the first podcast what we do with the blush directly face yeah, to face. Yeah, because I normally you never see me before. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's time to show my 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 ugly face and <laughs> <laughs> do something more because you always hear something from Batman and Pasha. It's time to do something different, especially that uh, I'm. I, I'm a guy who don't see Ukraine, yeah, because <laughs> you live here, uh, Batman <laughs> was uh, here, cap, uh, you know, a lot of times, so for him it's nothing new, for me it's everything is new, so, uh, so you will see it by my eyes and my feelings, and yeah, and, and I'm really happy that I see all, all, all these cities, and I, I'm waiting for more, and I meet a lot of uh, great people, I see it that the Ukrainian people are grateful, yeah, and they they are very nice. And uh, as I say last time, uh, they are really nice people, yeah, uh, very help helpful, yeah, and the hospitality is is uh, really really in high high level. And I think uh, the Polish people are are very hospitality, but the Ukrainian are a little bit more hospitality in, in than <laughs> their Poland, Polish people. Traditions. Yeah, tra yeah, traditions. We have the same traditions, yeah, but... Uh, because we are Slavic. Yeah, we are Slavic. <laughs> <laughs> but I think, you know, it's... it's I, I see the difference. I see the difference. 
my dears uh, don't forget to push the like button and subscribe button thanks for all of you who support us and see you later my dears see you later